if you don't get raw assets or feedback or things on a timeline, like you're stuck. And the difference in a verbal agreement and a written contract is miles. Yeah, I mean, that's good. good. Hmm? Um, you know, just uh, calls, 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 calls. Yep. All, the, all the things, all the things, all the things. Um, yeah, like I, I, you know, it's just one of those days, right? Like fulfilling contracts, trying to bring energy. Not trying, but you know, I, you know, I feel like today was just one of those days where you just eat the shit, you know. <laughs> like mm-hmm. you just, you're, the calendar is already like all you have to do is just follow the rope, follow the plan that was already scheduled. I mean, like that was it was one of those days, um, and uh, yeah, I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like the last two days have been like that, just like. 10 plus meetings that day and just mm-hmm. trying to show up and be the best version of myself and help them help them out. Um, yeah, that was, that was pretty much my day. Right. Um, that's still, that's it. Nothing, nothing nice. too crazy. What about yourself? You, you crash it today or what? Um, today has been a relatively quiet day um, on purpose, very intentionally. I had Initially, I had taken like eight days off at the end of this year because we were going to go to Colorado and do Vail and a couple other places in snowboard. But with whoo, um, with the change in schedule and puppy issues and just a couple other things, we decided not to go to Colorado. It wasn't the drive was going to be shitty with all the snow and stuff going on here. So, um, having that time off, my schedule has been relatively free, which has been really fucking nice. And so I just didn't fill it. I mean, that's, that's sick. I I got to watch, I got to watch the new star Wars episode early this morning. Yes. So I had two different mornings. Yeah. The book, uh, the book, uh, whatever it is, the book of, uh, Man, I don't even can't remember the name. Let me look it up. Um, so like last last morning, yesterday, I woke up at like six o'clock and I was in the office by six thirty. <laughs> and this morning yeah. I woke up and I was like, this morning, yeah, and I worked like freaking 14 hours straight. Something ridiculous. Um, that didn't eat. But today I was like, you know what? I'm gonna actually like have a slow morning. I like laid around for an hour. I got I watched a TV show, <laughs> the TV show, and then I started my day at 8 30 and it's an entirely different day than yesterday. Yesterday was kind of pretty, uh, it was one of those things where you tell me not to, um, uh, crash overdo it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yesterday was definitely an overdo. Um, all right. So question in the last, in the last 90 days, how many of those days have you had? You're even in the last 30. Let's just look at the last 30. The last 30. Um, Probably 10 because of the holiday. I took some time off a little bit. I mean, I don't know, probably more than that, like more like more well, I, mean, I mean, the, the overwork days, the 14 hour days, you four and a half. Oh, no, out of 30, I'll probably say like 12 of them has been like that other, you know, 12 okay. out of the 30. So, yeah, because I, I, I purposely like plan stuff during the week where we're in the jungle and I can't work or do <laughs> anything where we're like we're on the countryside or something like that. Um, okay, so in every yeah. given thirty day roll, I want that number to be less than eight. In any given seven day roll, that number needs to be less than two. See how this is playing out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so one one you get hundred and four. You get a hundred and four fuck you days. Like the and it, they're not bad, but the go, 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 like push, push, push. You get 104 of them a year. No more than two a week. Yeah, I like my Mondays to be kind of like those days. Those like 
just like eat the frog with lots of big things mm-hmm. in the week, like eat, like get them over with. Um, and then my Fridays, I purposely block off to like do whatever the fuck I want, like catch up or, you know, if I want to take the day oh, off, yeah. I take the day off. So Fridays, I don't let anyone book, book me. Um, unless it's a collect the bag. That's the only, that's, those are the only calls I will take on Fridays, collect the bags. That's it. <laughs> yep. You're going to get on my Friday, you're giving me some money. That's it. <laughs> I mean, you collect, the, you collect the bag any day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Fridays, I'll for sure collect the bag. I'll, I'll, I'll take a call that day for sure. I have no, no problem with that. I want to. Um, dude, Josh, what's up, man? I'm, I'm, I'm loving the swag today, dude. Like, you, you, you're, you're, looking, you're looking colorful today. Fuck yeah. Oh, yeah, I appreciate it, man. You know, switching it up a little bit. It's uh, raining. Bro, San Diego has been raining like crazy. It's the weirdest thing. Um, but yeah, just trying to stay dry a little bit. And um, you know, it's been cold, too. So it's been like maybe we've, I think we've been flirting with like 55, like 40. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just staying warm, you know, just just continuing to move and grow. Yeah. Um, and have have been stretchy or feeling stretchy for the past, you know, I guess you could say day and a half. Um, thank you, Heather. Shout out to you. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, just growing, man. Just figuring this stuff out and uh, really allowing using the momentum from like Savage uh, Savage Mother we were talking about yesterday, and um, using that going forward for what I'm doing in business, what I'm doing in my personal life, um, and just how I can show up better. And then from there, taking the feedback from. Uh, you know, the people that I'm able to connect with and add value to, the people that I'm not able to connect with and add value to right now, uh, you know, and just applying that, you know, moving forward and, and just checking my own ego, checking my own mindset and uh, shifting where necessary and continue to move. So, um, yeah, in, in, a, in, a, in another, you know, stretchy uh, growth uh, uh, cocoon right now, I guess you can call it. So grateful for it. I definitely need it, um, especially with where I want to go in this next year. Um, yeah, ready to continue moving moving the needle forward. Cool, nice. man. So, Josh, I'm going to tell you, nobody wants to hear about your fucking 55 degree days. Look at your text messages. And you can eat that shit in your 55 degrees. Yeah, Heather's in like pick. fucking snow tundra right now. I don't know why. You can come pick up that. the snow no, thank that you. you left in my front yard. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Damn. Might as well be in Chicago with that with that type of uh, those type of numbers. There is a foot of snow in my front yard. I'm not shitting you. It is sticking here. It never sticks in the city. Like down in the valley, it never sticks, and it is stuck. Yeah, no on my way. morning meeting this morning, my my response to one of the guys on Mike's team is an avid snowboarder. He lives in Salt Lake, and I was like, "Hey, cool." I was like, "You left some fucking snow in my front yard. Come and get it." He was like, "Oh." Oh, did I? And I was like, yeah, you want to see it? I showed him. He was like, oh, yeah, I've been doing snow dances. I was like, you need to knock that shit off, buddy. Your snow dance does not serve me at all. It is horrible. Yeah, I can't. I actually um, got to say I'm a little bit more grateful now. <laughs> it's, it's cold out here, but definitely not that cold. I'm, I think I'm good off that one. I've been... I think the last time I was in, actually, no, it was an awesome Big Bear uh, not long ago, but um, or earlier this year. But um, I think the time before that, when I was in like a crazy, I'm here from San Diego, so it's, this is probably the worst it gets. It's like, oh my God, it's crazy. Yep. You know, it's not from Ohio, not from Idaho, you know, so it's, you don't have to go through all that. And it's funny because we actually had a game up in Montana around this time of the year. Ooh. God, no. Oh, it was like negative 16 degrees. Like we're out there. I'm like, why are we even playing football? We should be inside right now. There's no <laughs> way for us to be out here. Um, <laughs> right? After that, I was like, yeah, you no, know, God, if, if if I do make it to the NFL, please just make sure it's not in Indianapolis or one of those cold cities like that. Just keep it, keep it somewhere I'll actually be proud of the sun shining every day, please. This is not gonna work. I love it. I love it. There's the California kid in you. Hundred percent. Trust me, if I could be somewhere warm, I would be. If it was even a good choice to be somewhere warm, like a functional choice, I would be somewhere warm right now. I, but living here is the smartest move. Oh God, it's freezing. I can't. 
And I mean, I don't mind snowboarding. Like I did it when I was a kid. I stopped very promptly after I moved to California. I was like, yeah, the, the water is right there too. We can surf just as easily as we can snowboard. I think surfing is a better choice for sure. But damn, like this kind of snow, like people don't know how to, these people don't know how to drive. They don't know how to act. My, I fell, I fell on a rug in front of my grill because it's frozen <laughs> on my rear end. I, I am going to have black and blue bruises all over my ass because of it. I was like, this is inappropriate. This is, this is not the life I want to live today. Sounds spicy. Yeah. Yep. I'm just like listening day. to you guys. And I'm like, it's like 65 degrees every day here in Columbia. Like, I don't even, it's, it's called it the eternal spring city for a reason. Um, oh, trust. I miss that weather. I miss that 70 and sunny. Yeah, Ooh. it's great. God, I want it. I just want it. He said with, with, the, be with the nice little amount of humidity, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, I miss the humidity. I miss the wet. Like, my skin's dry. I have chapped lips. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Desmond, you so better I, be careful or you're going to find me on your couch. You're like, I'm coming. Should, I already told you we're going to Italy next year. Bring, oh, yeah. bring, your, bring your mans. Go, come hang out. Come hang out in the Mediterranean for, for, for a month or two. Um, so I'm stoked for today. Today, we're going to do a single topic episode, guys. Single topic, okay? Woo! Great. It's going to be easy to stay on point. So, And it's a good one today, guys, because I get asked this question so much like this past year. I feel like maybe like, I don't know, like once a week, someone asked me this. So I'm like, I, I did a fill-in for someone on their workshop. I did a set, like help mm-hmm. did a Q&A session on sales. And this question came up two times and it was about um, offers and contracts. We're not going to get into the Mm. offer section part yet. Not today. We're going to say that for another episode, but we're going to get into the contract stuff. Um, I think that's, I think that's uh, super important. And so the kind of the breakdown of it is um, I want to break this down into different elements. You guys can feel free to add your own elements in there, but the elements I definitely want to shed some light on the scope of work, value, time, and likelihood of success. And uh, mm-hmm. let's kind of kind of unpack like what we what we see as b- best practices, what worked for us personally. Right, this isn't financial advice. Um, <laughs> just throw that plug in there. This yep. is financial advice. This is more about what we what we do and what what worked for us. And uh, yeah, so who wants to who wants to unplug with their um, oh, experience with contracts? All right, come on, first, shoot your shot. First and foremost, tell me tell me what questions got asked. Okay, How so are these questions really, being framed. Okay, so this lady, uh, she asked me, she was like, oh, well, I'm about to collect the contract. You know, she's in, she's in the middle of closing a deal. And she's like, well, I really want this. I really want to do a 12-month deal with them because I know they need 12 months for transformation. But the lady can't afford 12 months, and she only wants, she only could do three months, so we're going to do a three-month contract. And she was kind of asking, what does she do in that situation? And I was just like, you know... I don't want to give my opinion yet. I'm, I'm curious to hear how you how how you unpack it, and I'll share like what I you know what. what oh no, totally. What I recommend it. Yeah. Well, first thing I want to share is like there's a number of other things that I hear come up all the time. First and foremost, it's like, oh well, like I'm you know I I landed an agreement. I'm like okay, so and the, one of the first questions I always ask is somebody's like. I landed an agreement or I landed a deal. It's like okay, so what's the scope? What's what are the parameters of the agreement? Oh, well, we, we talked about this and we talked about, I'm like, okay, so what's on paper. And one of the first things that I hear that it doesn't necessarily shock me because people are, people are afraid of signing things. Even people are afraid of giving people things to sign. But the things I hear is like, you know, well, we had a really clear conversation. Like we're on the same page. Um, so I'm, I, I didn't worry about having them sign a contract. Like first big fucking no, no. Like, you put things on paper and it has a lot to do with like, A, how confident are you in your results? And B, like how committed is your potential client? Because the difference between paying somebody out of contract and paying somebody in contract is humongous. And it may not sound like it, may not seem like it, it may not be a big deal, but it is like the type of commitment, 
how well your client will follow through if they like whether or not they're going to do their part. Cause for most of the service providers, entrepreneurs out there, like you can only get a client as far as they're willing to walk, especially when it comes to coaches. And when it comes to like creative stuff, like if you don't get raw assets or feedback or things on a timeline, like you're stuck. And the difference in a verbal agreement and a written contract is miles. So like, that's the like number one caveat on the contract side. Like there's a, there's a huge amount of weight that's placed on having a written signed agreement. Secondly, more often than not, people do not look at scope. Can we just talk about scope? Because after I rant about scope, Justin's going to start ranting about scope creep and it's going to be great. But the scope of work, like being really crystal clear in your communication, your delineation and your itemization of the scope of work to be performed. It is such a big deal. Oh, well, I'm going to do, oh, I'm Josh, I'm going to, I'm going to use your business as a really good example. It's like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to um, create and edit. I'm going to create and um, produce five videos. Okay, but what does that mean? Are you going to write the script for them and then dir- like direct them and film them and post edit and cut clips for social media and do unlimited revisions and, and like all of a sudden, like your version of what five videos and their version of what five videos is could be miles different. Just like anything else, like somebody's version of coaching could be uh, weekly calls and an unlimited access to text messages at any time of the day. If somebody texted me at midnight that didn't have permission to, I, like, I will fire you. You lost your goddamn mind. Like, no shit. But the scope of your work and the clear delineation and like execution of how something happens is so important. And it is a, it's a piece that so many entrepreneurs want to skip to get to the close and the doing of the thing. And it is the biggest mistake that new entrepreneurs make. All right, Des, come on. Oh Give man, I think, you, I, think, I think you did the, you did a very good foundational, like AKA sign, sign the contract, <laughs> period. Like, yep. like I, I, I feel like I don't do business with anyone, even people internally, or even like, con- like freelancers without contracts. Like my entire mm-hmm. business functions on contracts. Matter of fact, Heather, you have a freaking contract sitting in your inbox right now. I know you're not rude. Why, I'm aware. You check your email, but oh, everything, no, I checked is, it. <laughs> everything, everything's about contracts. And so mm-hmm. um, one thing I want to, one thing I want to hit on, I think is the time thing. Remember Heather, you told me about like um, having certain minimums and like having options to extend. And I freaking love those contracts because if you like, for instance, in my industry, like I know it takes at least six months minimum to make a real impact or change. Right. And really, yep. I really want to, if I find a, a client I really want to work with, I want to work with them for like a year or two years. Right. Cause I want to play the long game. Right. And so locking in is crazy guys. This is crazy. So like locking in that retainer for at least covering to, you know, to get them from a point A to point B and then adding upsells into the contract baked in, right? So mm-hmm. like additional services, right? Like I just cleared another payment a couple of weeks ago for additional services because we discovered another problem. And today she asked me like, yo, we're going to go do, like I, I, you have someone in your team who could do this too. I was like, yeah, sure. Yeah, let's just, you know, let's get through it. Sorry, it's going to be another upsell next month, right? So, right. but, like, so it's like staying in like, Blocking in like, okay, what's the bare minimum problem we're solving? And it's going to do it over X amount of time. And we're going to work X amount of time, uh, you know, work over X amount of time. We have an option to extend it. And then here's all these extra things that I can, for additional, like for instance, if you want a salesperson, 5K, if you want this, 3K, if you want this, 1K, if you want, you know what I mean? Like having that stuff baked mm-hmm. in so you don't have to resell. They already know, they, they already know what's expected. So the shock factor is also not there, right? Shock factor is important in sales. Um, Pause, so I think, cause I'm going to add yeah. something to this. Yeah. So there's a couple, there's a couple of there's pluses and minuses, bonuses, and in-betweens for 
ha- setting up your contract like this, right? A, like you have the option to extend. The bonus and the benefit for your client is that you're giving them, hey, this is something you can swallow. So you're covering that fear. And I'm going to give you the option to extend. And you can set time limits on this. I'm going to give you the option to extend and hold the rate you're sitting in. Like I warn my clients. I warn my mentees. I warn and anybody, people who coach with me, people who consult with me. I warn them. The price that comes out of my mouth today is good for the length of time that I give you to sign this contract. And I set pretty rigid time parameters. Like if I issue a contract, you have 48 hours to sign it before that contract voids itself out. The system will automatically void it. It's just not available because I'm not here to have a conversation for one, two, five, 10, 12 weeks. Like if you, all your questions have been answered and I've issued you a contract, which takes a lot for me to issue period, you have 48 hours to sign it. Secondly, there's also, you can also add on to the front. This is a fun little piece. I, I call it um, a, like a minimum acknowledgement time. So I have a clause in a section in my contract that it says, okay, for a tw- like you're entering into a 12 month agreement. In the first 90 days, you can request what we call an option to quit. And it's a conversation and then a, and a negotiation factor. If you really don't like me in the first 90 days, you can request an option to quit. And I have put a clause in there to let people out of their contracts. Because if you don't like me, I don't want you either. Secondly, I have the option to void the contract in the first 90 days. And you don't, you don't get a conversation piece on that. If I don't like you, I don't want you. It gives me an out. And it gives them an out. It also, it, it's similar to what we call that money back guarantee. Okay. On the back end, giving them the option to extend allows you to funnel and create maybe a shorter contract, like a bare minimum time contract and allowing them saying, Hey, I know that this is bare minimum. How long we have to work together for me to show you what results really look like because shit doesn't happen overnight. And I also know that on any given Tuesday, it actually takes in like six months is your bare minimum. It takes somewhere between 12, 18 or 20 months to really get that solid, like we're getting somewhere or we're, we've completed X. So I'm going to issue a six month contract. It's also going to have a six or a 12 month extend. And you give them like in that first three months of your contract, you give them that first three months to choose that extend option and hold their pricing. And then maybe after the three months, it's the, it's in the, the extend price plus 10%. But you put incentives to make active, well-informed, good decisions that are strategically placed, business-minded, and they still give the win-win. Like, if you don't like me, I don't like you. If you don't want to do this, I don't either. Nobody wants to be in a contract with someone who doesn't want to work with them. Secondly, nobody wants to have... And I've done it. I have absolutely done it in all my years in business, but I've signed people into, con- into the wrong contract. Like you think, you know, one thing. And then when it, when it all comes out in the wash, you've got somebody in the wrong, the wrong agreement. You have to put clauses and terminology in place to set everybody up to win. Because if somebody's not in the right agreement, you don't just void it. Cause you can, I'm aware that a business owner can just, you can just cancel a contract. That's not how it works. You have change options, shift options, adjustment criteria, timelines, parameters, and timeframes. All of those things equal that trifecta that I always talk about, that win, win, win. And it covers your ass. Can then continue. I was going to say, there's, there are some things, oh, you're better than me in some areas (laughs) because I am such a, I guess, I don't know if this is, I'm considered an asshole. But all of my contracts, they cannot cancel my contract. I'm the only one who can terminate the contract. And the reason why I want to do that in my particular case, this is why my philosophy of what I, what I want, is if you don't want to do business with me, okay, great, buy, buy my contracts. If I already invested time and made plans, like you just buy my contract out. If you don't work with me, cool, buy me out. 
Oh, see, now that that I, I don't disagree with you. You have to remember this is this is an industry difference. Like there are some places and spaces, and because because I consult not only in like business growth, like strategic development, but technology interface. Sometimes the so- the the tech doesn't fit. Sometimes it it just simply is when you start to dig into the problem. In that first thirty days, you'll know like. There's, you write HTML and uh, I'm an S, like there's just, sometimes it just doesn't work or sometimes it's just not the right fit or they're not the right fit. And so much of what I do is personal and professional development that if it's not the right fit, I don't want somebody to, they don't, you can't, you can't cancel a contract because you're, you're stubborn, you're mad or you have buyer's remorse. Like, yeah. The, yeah. That option's not there, but the option of it not being the right fit, it's absolutely there. And I put it in there that they have that option because it, it is a conversation. It's not a, it's not just a, you get to make a choice and I don't get a say. That's yeah, not yeah, how yeah. that works. Yeah. Only reason why I do mine is that way is because I do performance deals where I get on like, like, I don't want someone like, oh, yeah. to care to a contract when we're about to hit a goal or if we're on track to hit a goal, like that will piss me off like well yeah yeah that the the structure of the parameters absolutely have to be coverage for that because the truth is is that people aren't stupid and some people are shifty now yeah, the, if you give them a way out they will if you say you know, you're gonna save fifty thousand dollars by canceling this contract then they, if that if they're out of intent you know what I mean? because you never know what you know how you know you never know you like don't. if someone would do that you know what i mean so I just want to protect my well, ass of like collecting the back. That's the whole point of that's the whole point of the contract is to protect your ass. And the truth is, is that you never know. You have to put language in your contract that is, for lack of a better way to say it, a little rough and tumble, like a little scary, because there you don't want somebody to be shicey. I'm not saying like I'm a. I have a lot of. Uh, in my, in how I bet people and my judge of character. So I highly doubt that I will work with somebody that's that kind of shy seat. And also I have been fucking wrong about all sorts of shit. Yeah. I have been so wrong about so many things that the truth is, is that cover both sides of the game board in a contract, you cover both sides of the street, yours and theirs. Mm-hmm. And I want every entrepreneur to stop and fucking hear me when I say this. It is your responsibility as an effective business owner for you to cover both sides of that street? Where that you have contracts to protect your business. Your contracts should protect all parties within the contract so that nobody gets fucked. Doesn't. I highly suggest rethinking being in business because you will not last. If you are not being on the up and up, protecting both sides of that, both sides of the fence, there's reasons why I have interesting clauses in my contract and my contracts are very different from most people's. I know most entrepreneurs aren't worried about protecting the client. And I think that that's wrong. You get to protect them, but you also, you also are here, especially as a coach, you're here to get them out of their own way, not giving them an easy out. So don't mistake what I'm saying. Don't mistake kindness for weakness. It's honesty. You have to be in integrity with your contract and you have to have a contract first and foremost. All right. I'm done with that rant. (laughs) Josh, man. Uh, you probably live off contracts with your business, right? I mean, because you're doing like creative projects, media production. So like, I'm pretty interested to kind of hear from in your world, like, like, how do you usually like frame your contracts usually? Like what, like, what's the, you know, what's something you can give to the audience? Um, I'd say the, the main thing of within creative contracts is it gets the one thing I love that you guys both have hit on is you have to really nail down and be um, really clear on your scope of work. Uh, it gets very like 
murky if you don't have that clearly defined. Um, one time, or one thing I realized is that a lot of clients still try to, if you give them an inch, they'll definitely take it a mile. Uh, meaning ref, even something as small as revisions, how many revisions are you giving? Um, what what time frame do they have to turn those revisions around in? Meaning if I give you a project and it can either potentially be the final deliverable or if you need a if you need a, a revision and we're within the scope of the contract, hey, OK, you only have you have 24 hours to give us back or 12 to 24 hours to give us back the, um, you know, the desired revisions from there. If we can make those happen, we will turn that over within 48 hours. That way we keep the ball moving, because if not, what they'll do is they'll hold off. They'll go get, you know, feedback from someone else. And then this person and then a week later from this person. And then by the time you look, you know, you get your actual feedback or those tend to do a laundry list of stuff that never was in the scope of the work that, you know, to begin with. Uh, from a bunch of people that were never in the strategy meetings, never a part of um, the creative process or the production process as a whole, um, you know, and so having that clearly defined um, and even if people want extra revisions, hey, if you only really get two revisions, you know, um, as a clearly def as as a given as part of our, our you know, contract or our agreement. If you need a third revision or you need changes here or there, that's going to be an additional charge. That's going to be outlined in the, in that contract. That way I know I'm securing my team's butt on the back end. So we're not having to, because the worst thing you can do as a creative is have a project that lingers in the back of your mind while you're also going out there getting the business. Um, the second thing I know for myself, I get to update my contracts. Um, I have had a love hate relationship with contracts. So when you guys are talking about, Hey, you, you this is something that you need. I realize that's something that I get to also improve in because um, as a creative, you're always told, you know, screw contracts, screw websites and everything else, like screw all that stuff. Just get out there and sell. And once you sell, you get one project in. Once you finish that project, you go to the next project and the next one and the next one. Like you don't start investing in a website and in contracts and talking to a lawyer until, you know, you're like six figures in the business. It's absolutely stupid. You know, because by that time you've, get, you've gotten dragged through the mud for so, so long because a lot of people, they understand how creatives work and they understand that creatives. The number one thing that holds creatives back is having the creative mind, but not having the business savviness to actually drive the business going forward. Um, so you get Amen. Some, and for me, I went to school for business. So I've always been a creative at heart, but business is actually what, dr what drives me a lot more than just picking up a camera saying that, oh, I'm a good videographer. That only goes so far. Um, and so being able to have clearly defined processes in, in scope within the, within the contract, um, also being able to, uh, like you guys said, create a deadline, you know, Hey, this contract is valid until such and such after that, you know, this, this becomes null and void. You know, we, if you want to have a conversation, we get to revisit this, but just know that today's price isn't going to be tomorrow's price. So going forward, I want you to understand that because a lot of times they'll hold off until three, four or five months. And then come back like, hey, remember when you quoted me? Yeah, I quoted you 500 bucks because I was an intern back then. This is when I, I just got started. I didn't even understand what I was doing back then. This is now my price is this, you know? So uh, just being able to have stuff really structured and clear um, and doing the, I know I have, uh, at least offline, uh, Desmond has shared something with me before uh, as far as saying uh, go, uh, go slow to then speed up. Um, I know that's something that I haven't, I, I've been working into my process as of recently um, but realizing, hey, it's better to take the time up front to be able to go a little bit slower, get your stuff structured, get your stuff, you know, neat and tidy. That way, especially from a legal or legality standpoint, um, that way going mm -hmm. forward, as you're continuing to build, that's one less thing you have to, you know, consistently worry about. And by you having your stuff structured as a creative, I'll say this. That is the that is one of the biggest things besides having a team work with you. I've noticed that having a clear, structured and or like defined and concrete um, a process with your contracts um, that actually separates you from every other creative out there. Uh, uh, most businesses actually respect you more because they realize that you're taking your own business seriously. So they can't sit here and try to, you know, dupe you out of your loot or, you know, try to swindle you here or swindle you there because they're, they're checking that how business savvy you are throughout the process so you having that stuff structured from the get-go it separates you from everybody else automatically you're going to be able to pitch more be, or pitch more um as far as like your value simply because once they see that they're like oh this person's serious so let's not waste their time with the 200 hundred dollar video uh you know so going forward you're actually structuring yourself in a much better way which causes less headaches and more peace of mind
Man, I love this because, Preach. um, oh man, I'm fired up. I was going to say, man, uh, there's mm-hmm. two things. I don't want to sidetrack, so I'm going to stay on contracts. But um, I'm for sure going to try a new sales strategy, like a big boy sales strategy. I guess uh, I guess they're all big boy sales strategy. But something that just came to me was like, man, um, I'm, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to experiment with pitch decks. I don't know if that makes any sense, but we'll, we'll talk about that in another yep. episode. But um, I think I, I, like being a I was like a science fair nerd. Like I was like doing all science fairs around the world, and uh, you know, just like. So like, I love presentations and I'm like, man, I know I can fucking probably crush it with that because that's, because when you're doing those type of presentations, you're trying to close six, fi- six to seven figure business, right? Like in front of mm-hmm. like, you know, enterprises and corporate. So like, I'm about to incorporate that and, and Josh, we'll, we'll talk about that offline too. Um, but, um, you know, so one thing I want to talk about here regarding contracts, I think it's important for the audience is obviously collecting the back, right? Collecting the B-A-G, with the money sign at the end, right? Fat ads as in plural, right? Because we were plural, not singular in these parts. Um, so real quick, I'll give I'll give my take on how I collect the bag on contracts. So I go for assumption closes, right? Like I assume that this is a no-brainer and I send it to you, right? Um, usually my stuff is a little bit more high ticket because I'm asking for 50K sometimes, quarter of a million dollars, three quarters of a million dollars on the back end between certain milestones. So yeah, I know that I'm not going to probably get someone to sign a fucking six month, a six page, seven page contract while I'm on the phone. Right. Cause I also want them to read it. Cause I really want them to understand what they're getting. So there's no confusion. Right. So I usually do a 24 hour to 48 hour hold period. And um, I'm a big fan of sending out invoices with reoccurring payments. Right. There's nothing worse they're chasing people down month after month, trying to get paid. Like automate, like you put the credit card in once, mm-hmm. you don't have to worry about it ever again. Even if it's a two payment process, I'll even like, make sure you have an, your invoicing system. Make sure that the, that second payment is hit no matter what, especially if you have timelines in your contract. Does it, if they blew their timeline, that's on them, but that payment's going through, right? We can finish mm-hmm. the project, but the timeline said I get paid on November 15th. I get paid on December 15th. I get paid on January 15th. It's your response. It's just, I don't care if you canceled all four meetings. Like I get paid on this day, right? Um, so recurring payments. So I see that happen a lot. Um, something that's also- Josh and I actually had a conversation about this earlier. Yeah, recurring payments, huge. Yep. No, uh, no, I don't accept Venmo. I don't accept fucking Dell. I don't accept PayPal. I want my shit through my invoicing credit card or I even do bank. I'll do bank transfer. I prefer not to unless it's like a huge dollar amount. I just want that payment process, like automatically your credit card straight up. Um, something else. This is super savage, guys. I'm going to give you guys some free game here. Um, if you have additional services baked in your your contract. During your process, you get to inquisit, like you get to be an invest, you get to be a private detective regarding those additional services within that company. And I'll give you guys a quick example. So an example of this is, um, let's just say that um, I'm working with someone, I just, I'll give you a real example. I'm working with someone and they were having issues with like, just like, just, just said, like, just doing too much. Like they had so much on their plate. Like they couldn't even like really uh, function and execute correctly. Right. And so I'm inquisitive about it. And I'm like, well, what's the root of all of this stuff? Right. And it turns out that there's a to-do list, right? There's this huge to-do list. Okay. What's on that to-do list holding you back from us securing the bag more? And we go through the to-do list and it's like two out of the three things I can for sure solve the three big, most important things. I'm like, okay, what's the most important one? It's that one, right? You already spent X amount of money on it the wrong way, this way. Let's, let's, I'm gonna do it for a price that's unbelievable. I mean, it's not, it's, it's believable because I'm not, it's not any copyright or anything like technical, it's just a matter of like strategic work, right? Easy upsell. Like, hey, it's on your to do list, it's holding you back. Let's take it off your to do list, right? So, like, being inquisitive can lead to more sales during your process too. So like, just because you put additional services on your contract, like it's cool, but don't wait for them to come to you and ask. You got to be proactive and investigate 
and discover an opportunity to service your client for them to be more successful and move faster. Because I'm very demanding in my contracts. Like I push my people, right? Mm-hmm. Like push, nice. push them, push them. Like today we were on the call and she was like, man, Des, I feel like I'm in a, like, feel like I'm in a training session. Right? I'm like, yeah, you, you know, we're, we're pushing, right? Like, you know, we're not waiting till next year. We're like, we got to collect the bag because I'm incentivized for you to make more money because I make more money. So yes, I'm going to push you because I want to make more money. This is full disclosure. Right? I'm not hiding it, right? I want you to make more money. So I make more money, right? It's win, 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 right? And the world wins too. So, yeah. um, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's my, that's my little pro tip on additional services. I know you have some savage stuff that you do too as well, Heather, right? I mean, you, you, uh, I mean, you... yeah, honestly, like being curious is really is like that inquisitiveness, that curiosity, being curious is the number one thing you would be shocked at how often problems, some of the, some of what people are calling their biggest business problems are solved simply might be being continuously curious in conversation and having that curiosity conversation be repetitive. Like my clients get certain types of check-ins. I'm like, "Mm, so how's life? What's going on? Tell me, tell me all the new things about your kids. Yeah. You tell me all the new things about your kids. And I find out that also your one or two clients that are in Shanghai are like literally destroying your family life. Okay, well, like, let's just reorganize and resituate this. Let's like, let's reprogram this over here and put X over here and Y. You'd be surprised at what being curious about someone's whole space will get you when it comes to those additional services. Oh, I think that landed. And they get more evidence that they get wins. It's like dopamine hits, right? Like they keep getting wins. They keep getting wins. They keep getting wins. And that creates a great retention because then you become like um, uh, a linchpin, right? Which is irreplaceable mm-hmm. because you're a problem solver and they're going to share their experience with their network with you, which is the part I'm like, I, I get excited about. So like the referral and the retain in the retention, I mean, that's how you compound, right? You don't compound being transactional in your relationships where they're in and they're out after three months, two months, one month, six months, like, okay, bye. No, you compound. Right, because you have to replace each customer you lose, and if your customers aren't your biggest salespeople or your biggest, your biggest, you know, uh, um, you know, they're not raving about you, then there's an issue, right? Like your customers should be your biggest supporters. Like, man, I freaking love this person, right? Like, anytime I, I it's stuff that I even like, I, I didn't even know that they can solve it. I mean, like, man, like he saved my my ass, right? <laughs> or she, right? So, like, if you can have a rock solid contract that's in alignment that gets them the desired outcome, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of long term of long longevity. If you have additional services that you can make money off of, being 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 curious, you become a linchpin, and then <laughs> your customers become your greatest freaking advocates in the marketplace because they loved their experience with you so much. And you become irreplaceable, right? So, um, well said. I think- yeah, yeah, I'm super. I think that's super important. Um, key thing is not transactional, guys. I keep harping on it because I, I talked to too many freaking business owners. I talked to an entrepreneur today. They kept, he kept, she kept saying, "Well, I need to figure out what I'm going to offer, 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 and offer." And I'm like, "Well, what is the like? What problem are you solving in the marketplace? And then build your freaking business around that. Your your contract, your like, who gives a damn about what you offer, right? Like, if you sit in a dark room and like scheme, like." okay, I need to sell a hundred of these widgets because I, you know, I'm going to do it this way and this way. And it's like, you haven't talked to anyone in the marketplace and like, you're just like spending your tires and waste your time, right? Hopefully, which most of you guys who are listening to this already know this. But um, there, there, there goes my rant of securing the bag. Um, that was fun, guys. I contracts. love talking about contracts. I'm contracts. Contracts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're going to talk about offers next time, guys, which is, I love offers, which is different than contracts, mm. <laughs> like how you present. They go hand you're... in hand. They're cousins. They're close first cousins. Mm. And they are two separate things. Mm-hmm. Offers, yeah. presentation, how you do it, when you do it, why you do it, when not to do it. Mm-hmm. We're going to give a, the, the total holistic game of like maybe four or five, maybe even six different like scenarios of offers. 
that like created millions and millions of dollars, right? Like, and it, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. It's the same, like similar formulas and just really about sensory acuity and get, getting shots on goal, right? The only way you get better at presenting offers is by doing it, <laughs> you know, like, you know, it's like shoot the basketball, right? If you don't shoot a basketball, you'll never, you'll never score. Um, Cool. So this is a lot of fun. Um, should we talk about crypto? Obviously, we've got to end every episode but with crypto, right? I mean, at least at least two out at least at least two out of the week, you know, maybe, maybe a little bit. Absolutely. Kinda. I mean, yeah. they, I can tie this back into contracts real quickly. Oh, yeah, let's do that then. Crypto crypt, crypto's becoming bigger. And offering the option to have let your clients pay in crypto is an option. I know quite a few coaches that do it these days. They're like, yeah, you know what? Like it was a good choice for me to start taking payment in Bitcoin or Ethereum. I mean, obviously like first and foremost, just like we do when we talk about anything crypto, like know your platform, know your game, know the rules, be super clear on how things work. And with crypto and wallets, you you can't, automatic payments are not quite, not always, not necessarily quite a thing yet. But it is a possibility, and it might be the possibility that secures you the bag. Never know. Yeah, like I'm glad you brought this up because I've been obviously I'm like super obsessed with trying to figure out how how to. Um, I'm even trying to pay my people in crypto a little bit. I'm gonna pay them their bonuses at least. Um, but I'm like, man, like I want to get paid in crypto, but like the the infrastructure just isn't where I will want it to be. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a, um, it will be. A, yeah, it will be, but not right now. It's not, I want that reoccurring and I want it to like, I'm waiting for like people who could pay in visa and like someone's going to, someone's going to eat the bullet with, with VC money where they'll just automatically convert it into whatever token you want and instantly be in your bank account or instantly be in your wallet. Like, that's what I want. I hate waiting two days, like three days, four days, five days for, for money. Like wire transfers sometimes ACH take like 12 days, 12 days, right? Cash flow is so important. Like 12 days is a long time mm-hmm. to receive payment, right? Not yep. even including like the net amount of time it took you to get that payment. Cause some people have net 15. I know, I know you Heather, you're a big fan of like <laughs> net zero pay me now. Right. Like, <laughs> Um, well, and I do, I offer a net 90 for corporate clients. Oh, wow. You're so, that's so good. Like that's a good. My net point. 90 contracts are 250 and above though. 250 total, 250 payments. Oh no. 250,000 minimum. The contract minimum is 250 okay. Okay. And if this is broken down into so payments? Just schedule? in general, the, ba- the base minimum on, on a corporate contract is 250,000. Got it. So got it. it can go anywhere from that and up, but because that base minimum is so high and I'm aware of how accounts receivable and accounts payable works, I they have a net 90 option. That net 90 option, I mean, they get charged interest. Yeah. Nothing and you probably give them, a, and do you probably give them, a, I was like, man, if I did that, I'll probably do like a discount schedule in terms of like, hey, if you pay before 90 days or whatever, you get 2% off or some shit like that. I don't know. I know we used to do it in corporate. Like, nope, it's you, just, it's, hey, it's, hey, if you need that 90, here it is. And here's your interest terms with it. Never a discount schedule. I know you're big on no discounts. Nobody, I, know in cor- I know in corporate, nope. they did that. They did like 2% like rebate or some shit like that. If they, for early payment, they incentivize people to pay early. Um, that's cool. That's sick. 90 days is a long time. I heard of 45 days and 60 days, but never 90. That's, that's pretty, it's pretty crazy. Um, yeah. Damn, that's good. Sorry. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, I don't want a two hundred fifty thousand dollar contract. I'm good. <laughs> I'll help you secure that two hundred fifty thousand dollar contract, Heather. Let's go. Put me on the phone. Put nice. me in, coach. Put me in. I'll collect the bag. Put me in. I can sell that ninety days. Look, you got nothing to lose for ninety days. I mean, you do, but you don't. Right? Easy money. All right, cool guys. Well, this was a fun episode. Um, we got to, we got to play a little bit about contracts. Don't forget if you, if you feel like this will be be super valuable for someone, share it with them. You know, if you want to come on the show, jump on campfirecapitalism.com, make a request, 
feel free to uh, leave us a beautiful review because we do want to spread this mission to as many entrepreneurs around the world because we're in this for the long run, guys. It was nice and we're out. Peace. Hey.